Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Studio C in beautiful West Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's a cloudy gray day today with less than a week to go before the CSA exam, but we're excited to uh, walk you through uh, some more tips for taking the CSA exam. Uh, this is part two of a three-part series in which we talk about uh, some of the changes and some specific tips on how to do the uh, CSA exam. This doc that I'm about to walk you through is um, is going to be posted in the in the description. It is nothing fancy. In fact, this is a very plain, straightforward video walking you through some tips I've found to help you get ready for the CSA exam. All right, we'll get started here in just a moment. All right, so uh, in video one, we focused on the uh, open-ended questions that are new to the, to the 2020 version of the exam. Today, we're going to focus on common mistakes as well as general tips and reminders for, uh, for writing the CSA exam uh, and focusing specifically on uh, written response questions. Um, in part three, we're going to talk about some tips and reminders that are unique to the 2020 exam as well as a little bit about the format just to make sure you're all ready to go. But hopefully by now, you're pretty comfortable with the, with the format. All right, so common mistakes to avoid. So first of all, one of the things you need to be aware of is that the questions are not designed to be finished. They are, they're adding lots of stuff on here. If you're able to finish them, great, but don't panic if you are unable to finish the question, particularly with the new open-ended questions. Those do take some, take some time. So the idea is to do as many parts as you can in the time and do it well, um, but also you know, use your time as need. Do not steal your submission time to continue answering. Remember, you do not need to get 100% on this test to get a five out of five on AP. Traditionally, it takes only about an 80% or even less to get five out of five. So you don't need to finish absolutely every single thing. What you do need to do is, uh, is do the parts that you can do well. Now, as part of that, if at first the question seems difficult, make sure you break it down into key tasks or key parts. Sometimes you'll be able to get some of it and not all of it. Sometimes the question may seem completely overwhelming. But if you can say to yourself, oh, I can accomplish this, you can. So you start to write maybe a for loop. You start to write an if statement on the inside of the for loop. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, some of the other parts will, will come to you as well. But at least make sure you get the little bits, the basics. Find the simple one, simple solution, simple criteria, for example, and tackle that one first. And then hopefully the other ones will come, come to you as you go. Now, do not assume that questions get harder. Do not assume that part B is easier than part A. And a little bit later on, I'm going to talk about what happens if you can't do part A, but you can do part B. As that's an absolutely allowed and totally uh, is something I would encourage you to do. So don't assume they get harder, and that might affect your, your timeline. Here's a really common mistake. Don't make the mistake in confusing equals equals with dot equals. Remember, equals equals are for ints and doubles. Dot equals are for strings and for other types of things. But generally speaking, the equals equals the dot equals, that will cost you marks, especially if uh, um, it may cost you multiple marks if you make that mistake in many different places. Okay, watch out for initialization errors. So there's two things I want to talk about with this. I'm going to switch over to IntelliJ in just a second to show you what that looks like in code. So first of all, the common thing to do is set up, say, a string, string answer, and then maybe you want to add something to that string. Maybe you want to build a bigger string. In this case, I'm adding a slash. Maybe I'm creating a website. Remember that this will cause an, uh, an error unless you initialize your string with a empty value. So if I go equals quotes quotes, now my, uh, my answer has been, uh, string has been initialized with no text inside, but it's no longer null. So I can plus equals it. That goes for any type of variable. You can't plus equals to something unless it has a starting value in it. So don't forget uh, about that. The second one is uh, a little common little uh, trick. And I want to show it to you in, uh, in IntelliJ. So let's imagine that I've got an instance class here. And uh, I want to set up a, it's for a course, and I want to set up an array list of students. I'm just going to use strings to, to hold their students' names, and I'm going to create this constructor. It's not a very realistic example because I have to pass in student one, student two, student three, student four, student thousand, whatever. So, um, but what I want to show you is this. So this would be a common thing you might see on that exam is that the instance variable will be set up like this. Sorry, try to get there. We go. It will be set up like this array list string students. And what happens is you then go and try to add. A student, which normally would be a, uh, a, a successful line to add to an array list. However, the problem is is that this array list never got initialized. It needs to say equals new array list somewhere. Either that can happen up here, which is where what I tend to to do. 
and I usually just do that version of it as opposed to having the angle brackets again. Or alternatively, you need to have that in your constructor or somewhere else before you can add. Okay, and now you'll be able to add your students successfully. So just keep that in mind. That's a common thing that they will do is they won't add the equals new part. Same thing goes with an array. They want to initialize an array with its size or with its initial content. And you have to make sure that you, you set the size of the array before you can edit any contents of it. Okay, very common mistake. Little uh, trick they often uh, hit you with. Okay, all right. Things are, uh, other common mistakes. Watch out for search terms that are longer than the string searched. If I'm looking for the name of a course and um, they may deliberately pass in a name of a course that's longer than what you're looking for or the other way around. They're looking for something that's longer than, than, than the thing. So you need to make sure that you handle that in your, uh, as the first part of your, uh, of your method. If uh, search term dot length is greater than uh, you know, to be searched, return false, that kind of thing. Okay, otherwise you're gonna get your out of bounders. All right, next tip. Remember, one divided by three equals zero. Those are integers, right? Integer math retains integers. So one divided by three equals zero. However, 1.0 divided by three equals uh, 0 0.333, etc. or also 3.0 would also retain the decimal 0 0.33333. So don't forget that. A little common little mistake, okay, that they will uh, hit you with often, okay? All right, remember that the ways to get size dif sizes differ depending on your, your problem. If you're looking for a string, it's length bracket brackets. Whatever the string is, dot length bracket bracket. If you're using an array list, it's dot size bracket bracket. And just because Java wants to confuse you, if you're working with an array, it is simply dot length, no bracket bracket. Why? Because bracket bracket is indicating a method is going out and finding out the size, but arrays have a constant size. There is no um, method they have to call. It's, it's like a variable you're accessing, essentially. All right, watch out for private versus public. Um, if it's uh, private, you may need to provide a getter method. Don't forget, I'll switch back to IntelliJ, that uh, all instance variables are expected to be private uh, as a general rule in, um, in um, the CSA and, and generally in good coding. Remember that array lists cannot hold primitive variables. So the lowercase i int, the lowercase b boolean doubles. They can only hold the wrapper class versions, which are the capital I full word integer, capital B boolean, capital D double, etc. However, once you call say dot get out of it, you can treat them exactly the same as uh, as ints and uh, and doubles. But don't forget, you can't put those in. Uh, you, if you're initializing array lists, you have to initialize it with the the full word. All right. So that's my common mistakes. Now that's very much related to the second part we're going to do, which is uh, general tips. Okay, so first of all, if it asks you to create a whole class to clear all instance variables as private, unless told otherwise, and I just mentioned that a couple times already. So in other words, here's my instance class of course, both my course name and its array list of students are declared private. So somewhere down here, I would need to get a getter method if I want to return those, etc. Or and or it's a string method to help do good uh, printouts. Uh, in Oh, this is interesting. In the free response questions, comments come before the method. For some of you, this is going to be not a problem at all. Uh, for others that aren't used to, to reading code uh, on the test, this is something that you need to be aware of. So if I go and look at the AP exam, the sample AP exam, all I'm, what I'm referring to is that this comment here refers, sorry, sorry to highlight the right thing here in this. Sorry about that. This comment here refers to the method down below. This comment here refers to the method down below. Because the, the spacing you'll see is not very uh, intuitive on that, they don't put extra spacing in between, it can be confusing. Generally, you can figure it out, but if you're trying to, to read this in a, you know, a time intense exam, you're under a little bit of stress, it can be easy to mess things up and just kind of get confused. So just remember, the comments come before the method, okay? All right. Remember that if you use array list dot remove, you have to back one up in your for loop. So the idea behind this is, and this is quite a common question I have to do, is to take something from say one array list and put it into an array or another array list. So if you choose you know array list dot remove, remember that your 
when you remove something, the rest of the array list backs up. So if I remove item two, whatever was item three becomes item two. If I remove item th uh, four, whatever was four becomes item, uh, be you know, the next thing becomes item four. So why that's a problem is because if you're using a for loop to loop through, say you're searching for something, you want to remove everything that contains the word error, for example. Well, your for loop will loop an increment i. So if I take out two, remove two, I loop back up, i goes to three, but now I'm over here and my what was three has now become two and so I skip looking at this one to see if it needs to be removed as well. So therefore, you often need to use a, a backing up of your i uh, of your for loop like with an i minus minus or something whenever you use remove. It's something to keep that in mind. When writing methods, pay close attention to the parameter list. If something is passed in, you will need to use it. That's the hint, right? If you see a method, let's see if I can find one. Here we go. Boolean equals this particular one. Actually, I don't know if you actually end up having to use in this particular question. But because it passed in something, you have you know you're going to have to use it. If you're not using it, chances are you're not reading the question exactly right. That said, consider if it's useful to, to play around with the type of parameter once it's on the inside. So for example, they might add, uh, pass in an array, but you might find it easier because you're, maybe you're looking at removing or copying or inserting. Maybe you find on the inside, you quickly convert it into an array list because now it's a lot easier to insert. And then when you're done, of course, if it's a re check the return value, so if you have to return it as an array, then you get convert it back. That may be easier to do than playing around with just the array itself. Okay, so consider that uh, whatever, uh, whenever it might be useful, but again, pay very close attention to what the uh, return value is that it asks for. Remember, to keep your methods generic. Very often they'll do things like searching and they'll, they'll give you a whole bunch of sample searches and say, when I put in the word disk, for example, it shows me this. When I put in the word uh, diskette, it shows me this. When I put in the word disky diskerton, it shows me this. But the method is not designed to, re to receive disk. It's re designed to receive any string. But all of their examples are using the word disk. So just make sure that you're realizing that it wants something generic. It wants to be able to receive any search term, not just the particular ones they're showing you as examples. Okay? Um, and the other thing is, uh, it's related to that, is make sure that you uh, are working for any size of an array or array list, not just the, the sample size. That's a common uh, uh, mistake to do, again, when you're under the pressure of a test. If you pass an array, all of their examples might be short, but they want it to be able to handle any size of an array. All right, next tip. Sometimes you can call a method even if you're not successfully implementing it. This is the idea of part A and part B. So you might be asked to write a method in part A. Okay, maybe it's a method that you thought was going to be simple, but you know you messed it up. Maybe it's just something you just have a blank on you can't figure out. Then it goes to part B, and part B asks you to use the method you already wrote in part A. So your, your first instinct is, oh, well, I didn't do part A, so I guess I'm uh, uh, out of luck. The answer to that is, is, is not true. You can use that method. You can call that method even if you never wrote it. You just assume that you wrote it right. You know what the return value is going to be. You know what the parameters are going to be. So you can successfully call it in part B without ever having successfully uh, finished part A. Sometimes that happens if you're really uh, uh, crunched for time and you realize, hey, I could do that second thing it asked me to do way faster than I could do that first one. You can also play around with the order of things as well. Hopefully that makes sense. That's, I know that was a little bit confusing to explain visually, verbally. All right. Uh, read carefully to see what you're supposed to do if a search term appears in the answer more than once. This is a common, common thing to, to, to try to handle. So you might be looking for the word disk, but the word disk might appear in multiple places. If you only look for the first occasion of uh, occurrence of disk, you might not uh, solve the problem. Okay? When working with array lists, check for null. Uh, if you're pulling something out, you might find an empty uh, object. Don't forget to, to check for that if that's important for you. So it probably won't be as important in this in this particular uh, version of the test, in other words. And then remember that substring is the AP's favorite method. They love substring. Now we'll talk about ways you can avoid substring if need to. But if you're trying to remember what the boundaries are for substring, because you can pass in a single number or multiple numbers. So the one kind of way you can always figure it out is that substring to uh, from zero to word dot length will return the entire word. Now remember that word dot length length is the is uh, includes um, the extra. Sorry, the length is one is is four. If the word was uh, here, let me find a better word. Let's say I wanted to do favorite, 
Kane spelling a favorite for Americans watching. Um, so favorite has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters in the Canadian spelling. Um, but the last one is eight because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So length is, uh, is uh, um, nine. Yeah. So that's how that works. So therefore, here's a couple of examples. If you go to zero to computer length minus one, it returns one less than the final thing. Or if you go from one to computer dot length, it returns everything but the first letter. Okay. Now, last thing I want to do with this video is I want to just have a quick look at the Java quick reference sheet. Remember that you were allowed to have this handy as well as for this exam, you're allowed to have extra uh, stuff as well. So let's have a quick gander at what it is. And in case you haven't seen it, so there is the standard string methods. Excuse me, and it does give you a little bit of reminders of what substring looks like. It reminds you what index of looks like. It's equals and compare to. But here's the really, 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 really important thing: is you are not restricted to these six, these seven methods. One of the sample exams that came out here in the last week asked you to find something that 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 if it contains this word. And the solutions they did all use index of and substring. And people were asking me why why didn't they just use dot contains in their solution? And that's because the dot contains method is not part of this reference sheet. So they will never give you an answer that contains anything that isn't part of the sheet. But you are free to use dot contains. You are free to use the split method. You are free to use any of the standard Java methods that you can use uh, that you can write from uh, from your own memory. Um, but you won't see those in their in their solutions. They will accept them. They will mark them 100% correct if they're used 100% correctly. Uh, but you won't see them on this list. The other thing I want to point out to here is here's some stuff about integer and double. Generally speaking, you don't need to really worry about that because you can uh, just uh, uh, access them with dot get if you're using an array list and then treat them like standard ints and doubles. Um, there are some things on the math class. If you if you're trying to do something with an exponent, remember you can look at this and look up how the POW method works. That there's a square root, also a bit of the random method. Uh, there's your standard array list ones. And the one thing I just want to point out to you is the equals into string. Um, equals isn't really going to be super uh, crucial for you, I don't think. But to string, remember if you were to just print, um, if you called uh, say an array list dot get i, it'll by default call it to string method. So you may find that it asks you to write it to string method. Um, um, otherwise, because if, if, if you don't have it to string method, remember what it ends up doing is it prints um, a memory address, a hexadecimal memory address, which is not usually what you want. So there may be something related to that, but that's there. All right, so that's it for this video. That is my, uh, my quick tips for general exam uh, knowledge, as well as common mistakes. Again, one divided by three equals zero. Don't forget that one. Don't forget equals equals, that's a common error, and don't forget about some kind of initialization error. So that's it for part two. In part three, we're gonna talk about a few things that are specific to the exam that are just generally about how to get ready for this year's exam as opposed to any of the others. Uh, remember the part A, uh, or part one of the of this three-part series also talked about the open-ended questions, and that's in this talk as well. All right, everybody, hopefully you find that useful. Have a good one.